So what do you do when these nice straight A arms become these nice bent A arms because this happens? <laughs> hey, that's nothing but ice! <laughs> well, that's easy. You throw on a set of these. Heavy duty arch day arms from Super ATV. So as you guys know, thanks to a little mishap here with the Pioneer 1000, that was totally not my fault. I ended up bending the one A arm here, as you can see. So instead of replacing it with another stock A arm that's just liable to do the same thing, if I happen to have another mishap that happens to not be my fault as well, I'm going to go ahead and replace these with a little bit beefier high clearance arched A-arms from Super ATV. Now the nice benefits of running a high clearance arched A-arms is it does give you a little more clearance in the front, not necessarily ground clearance, but it actually kind of serves the same purpose as this arched here, where when you have just the straight A-arms like this, you know, you don't have as much space in here as you do with like an arched A-arm, where it gives you that, this little bit broader opening, I guess, underneath your machine. So I'm going to get the front end of this guy up on jack stands, which is currently holding Zippy up, but I don't think he'll mind us borrowing him for a while. It's lots of fun stuff, so stick around. Oh, let out here. It smells like cat pee. It's funny how living on a farm, you always wind up with a bunch of straight cats running around. Almost as if people just bring them up and drop them off because they think you're on a farm. You need more animals, I guess. I'm out of jack, that ain't gonna work. Better be handy to have a nice floor jack. Time to dismantle. Well, the first part's easy. Just take a 19 millimeter socket and pull the tire off. Tell you what, these little brushless impacts are quite impressive. Especially because they're cordless. Take them anywhere. All right, now I'm gonna take the little pin out of the tire rod end. Is always fun messing with these little pins. Pin! Oh my, where can I put it where I won't lose it? And the bolt for this is a 17 millimeter. And this might take a little love tapping to get off, so I'm gonna put the bolt back on loose so I don't bung up my threads. Give her a couple little taps. Use a little hammer. There she is. Now these guys, I'm gonna have to get in there with a wrench. I think I'll go ahead and take my brake line loose first. These, of course, are all gonna be 10 millimeter bolts holding our brake line on. I'm not gonna take it off a caliper though. I'll take the caliper loose so we don't lose all of our fluid. Brake caliper is held on with the 17 millimeter as well. Let me get some earplugs. Woo! Huh? Now I just take the brake line loose here enough that I can just set this back up out of the way without having to unhook it. You know what? I'm taking that guy off because it's getting in the way. That's a 10 millimeter too. Get 
Well, if I actually had a pair of needle nose and not these uh, multi-purpose Leathermans, might be a little easier. There we go. And while I'm in the mood for taking off pins, might as well take one off of our axle bolt as well, or a hub bolt, whatever you want to call it. If you're the kind of guy that washes his machines off before he works on it, hats off to you. I usually don't have that kind of patience. I just like to jump right in and get to work it. But it probably does make it a lot nicer to work on things. But they're cleaned off and not all muddy. Alright, I think the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this shock off and get it out of the way. These are 17 millimeter bolts here for the shock. Leave that in loose till I get the top one off. Oh, and that one's going to have to be by hand. that and take my other brake line loose here get this caliper on out of the way just throw it up in here on the heater hoses for time being yeah it'll work now for the steering knuckle let's see if i can get this top one loose what we're probably gonna have to do Tap that guy loose. There's the top. Before I mess with the bottom, I'll go ahead and take the top clear out. There's the upper. Now I have both sides of this jacked up in the air, so in order to keep this from spinning as I try to get the snut off, I just use the wood clamp I had here. That'll clamp it and brace it so when I spin it, it doesn't spin both wheels. If you don't have anything like this, as long as you leave the one side on the ground so the tire, so the weight of the machine is on the tire, that should help keep this from spinning as long as you have it locked in four-wheel drive. Ah, oh, here she comes. Like that. Way. Look at that. Self dismantling. Now it's just a matter of unbolting the lower A arms, which are 17 millimeter as well. And voila! So upon closer inspection, I would say that it was actually from smacking a rock or something that uh, bent my A arm and not sliding into the wood pile there, which I didn't think that would have, was a hard enough hit to do this amount of damage. And I will say there was one point on that ride where going up the hill that Tommy rolled his four-wheeler on at the top. I hit a rock hard going up there that I didn't see in the snow. Ooh, there's a big rock. <laughs> that very well might have been the culprit to doing this. But I'd say it wasn't from sliding into the wood pile, but from smacking that rock on that hill. So now that I got these tore off here, let me show you guys the difference between the Super ATV A-arms and your stock ones now aside from being beefier themselves as far as the tubing diameter i mean you can see the big difference there these a arms give you an extra inch and a half clearance forward for bigger tires so here's the stock when lined up and compared to the super atv and there you can see let me get this lined up a little better so there you can see the difference now the stock ones have the little the bolts here that bolt your brake line in and super ATV includes a little drilled and tapped holes here that you'll be able to still attach your brake line to out of the way for the uppers and they also make everything greasable you see here we got the grease zerk which the factory ones don't you don't get you don't have any ability to grease anything whatsoever again here are the bottom ones this is my nice bent one and here are the Super ATV. Again, 
There you can see the difference in the forward spacing you get. And you can see how at least the not bent has the straight run pipe where the Super ATV gives you the arch to give you the high clearance on your A-arms. And again, the tubing itself is a much bigger diameter making them stronger. And again, stock A-arms, non-greasable. Super ATV, greasable. So with the A-arms off, now comes the task of removing the ball joints out of the old A-arms so we can press them into the new A-arms. Now in order to do this, you are gonna need either a ball joint press or removal tool, which if you don't have one, a lot of automotive parts stores will actually rent them out for you. And I didn't have one, but I figured with as many projects as I plan on doing here throughout the years on Appalachian Mountain Riders, I was gonna go ahead and get one. So I got this kid here from good old Harbor Freight for around 80 bucks. And it should have everything we need to swap out these ball joints. So I'll go ahead and show you how to use this guy real quick on one of them. And then it's just the same steps repeated for each and every one. And if you don't know what a ball joint press removal kit is, it's basically a big C-clamp that has a bunch of different adapters for slipping over the ball joints that'll allow you to press them in and also push them out. So you guys didn't realize not only was this going to be an install and review of Super ATV Arch Day Arms, but it's also a how-to and how to replace and service ball joints. Double your production value. So the first thing we need to do here on the upper before we can take the ball joint out is to take the snap ring out. Now you can either use snap ring pliers, which I have here, or you can use a good pair of needle nose and get the same effect if you don't actually have these. It doesn't hurt either to take a little brake clean. We want to clean these up anyway to keep as much dirt off the stuff as we can. Clean that up a bit. But basically what you got to do is just spread these to remove that clip. Now these may be a little stuck on here. Yeah, see how, I don't know if you can see if I'm zoomed in enough. But here on the back it's still not wanting to come out so I'm just going to take a straight edge screwdriver probably a little more on it work it around and there she's loose almost and now whoops oh, I lost it cooperate with me we're on camera there I get the one side up work the other side up and that's out now these upper ones are made to press through this way so we gotta take our tool here this kind of seems like a massively huh i don't think that was supposed to come apart should still work nonetheless all right so we have our ball joint in here we have the sleeve that's big enough to go over the ball joint and actually rest on the a arm that goes around we have our actual press arm here so now it's just a matter of taking the wrench putting her on there and start cranking And see how she's moving. And just like that. We have removed the ball joint. Now my lower ball joints, as you can see here, the rubber is knit. And the other one's the same way, probably from a stick or something. They were like that before I uh, tore these off of here. So I'm going to go ahead and order new lower ball joints, and we'll just replace them with brand new ones instead of risking using something like this. Now pressing the ball joints back in the new Super ATV arms is just as simple as uninstalling them as your Harbor Freight guy comes apart. The only thing you got to make sure to pay attention is these are going the wrong way. You don't want to put them in upside down. They're also not going to do you any good. So to press the new one in, make sure you have your bolt facing the right way. And you pretty much just press it in in the reverse manner that you pushed it out. Once you have it pressed in, flip her over. Reinstall our snap ring. Mm 
making sure that it seats in a groove like so. And the uppers are ready to go on. Now before we go throwing the AOMs back on here, we do need to install this steering stop that Super ATV sends you, which requires you just to take this boot loose here, pull it back, insert this in there, and then they send a zip tie to fasten that boot back on with. Pretty much the clamps that they put on the back here, they're not like these pinch ones out front here, where you can easily take them off. These are pretty much a one-time use. They go on and they crimp them tight. And so pretty much all you can do is get back in here to the little ear and cut it. You can use wire cutters. I happen to have a pair of tin snips here I think I can get in there with. Maybe. There. And with the ear off. That'll come off. So just take this loose. Now once you have this back, just simply take your stop. Push it on there to pull snaps. Reinstall your boot. Resecure with the provided zip tie. And always remember to trim off your access zip tie. A arm installs right back into the stock location, although this may be tweaked a little bit from that impact. I may have to widen these up a little bit with a hammer. I think I'm going to have to. Just a little tweaked from the impact. I'll take my hammer here and just give her some love taps. Thing is, I really can't see when I'm lined up. There we go. Hey, Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetie. I'm going to make your coffee. I uh, figured. Why did you see him come here? Why did you see him? I'm going down. They just got here, sweetie. these down and what I mean by that is the hillbilly method of torquing is super simple there's only three different torque settings to it there's uh, light grunt uh, moderate grunt and uh, heavy grunt easy we're gonna do probably a, a moderate grunt of, uh, on this guy uh, so there's the light we're gonna go moderate uh, well I'll give her two moderates uh, there we go you guys make sure when you're putting these on, you put the right one on the right side. It's real easy to tell, plus Super ATV does give you a nice color printed instructions. As you guys can see, woo. But basically, you're just going to make sure that you have the shock mount towards the back, and you'll be good to go. So I'm going to try to save myself a little bit of work here and go ahead and install these lower A-arms before I put the ball joints in, so I'm not fighting it on the ground like I was with the uppers. Now, the nice thing about these A-arms from Super ATV is they are fully adjustable meaning that these will thread in and out so you can set your alignment right where it needs to be now as per the instructions that came with these guys i set these at 18 and a quarter center of your eye here to center of where your ball joint is going to be that'll give you about a negative one degree camber on your wheels so that's what our baseline is going to be to start we'll install these but only hand tighten the bolts so if we have to we can unbolt it adjust to fine tune our alignment and once we have that dialed in then i'll go ahead and go back through and torque everything down to two medium hillbilly grunts spec as i would imagine i am probably going to have to do a little bit of pounding to get these guys to go in due to the fact that i buggered up my mounts when i smacked the rock Where's my dead blow hammer? Just a couple little love taps. Hey, that is like that. Another bolt. Tight. 
ta-da! Simple as that. All right, so a couple days have gone by, and although I've had to be very impatiently waiting for my new lower ball joints to come in, thanks to the power of the mystic arts of editing, you guys don't have to wait. Because I got my new ball joints here, and we're going to go ahead and press these in, and then it shouldn't take a whole lot more to throw everything back together. Now basically it's just putting everything back together in the opposite way that we tore it apart. So I think I'm going to play around here and for the first time ever in Appalachian Mountain Riders use a time lapse video. So please sit back and enjoy the music. Alright guys, not quite yet. I gotta do all my footage of the stock shocks first. And then we'll get these bad boys here on. Alright guys, so as you can see, we got everything back together here. The new A-arms are looking pretty good. So for the other side, it's just simply a matter of repeating steps one through however many it took. And then we'll be able to set this guy on the ground, check our alignment, and we'll be good to go. Now unfortunately, that alignment video is gonna have to wait. Because I cannot do that other side yet because one of the new ball joints I ordered from Rocky Mountain ATV MC unfortunately came out of the package with a tear in the boot. Which is no big deal. I'll simply get a hold of Rocky Mountain. Their customer service is really good. I'm sure all I'll have to do is send a picture of this and they'll send me another one. It's just going to delay finishing this up even longer, but hey, that's life. It happens. We're not going to worry about it, get mad and discouraged. We're just going to keep on riding. And whenever the new part gets here, we'll finish her up. But anyway, once I get the other side, finished up I will do a designated video just on getting the alignment dialed into where we want it to be and then we'll be good to go. If you guys haven't had a chance to check it out yet I do have my website up and running. I will leave a link in the description below. Head over there check it out. It's still far from finished but I do have a few things up there including a, a blog that I'm that I've started that I'll, that I'll post a couple times a week on that. But until next time guys keep on riding. Appalachian Mountain Riders is brought to you in part by the following. The Honda Side-by-Side -Side Club. If you own a Honda Side-by-Side -Side or are thinking about buying one, then you need to check out HondaSideBySide.com because who knows the machines better than the owners that use them every day. Head on over to HondaSXS.com and sign up today. And by my gracious supporters on Patreon.